are in the room. We are. Okay, I will swap over, flip over here. So, uh, welcome everyone who's uh, watching kind of an informal start tonight to the Stellar Division Finals between Team Atlas and Team Bronze 5 Age. Uh, yeah, a cold open, if you will. I'm the minor threat, and with me is my beautiful co-host, the Amo. Oh my gosh, I'm beautiful. Isn't that glorious? You are beautiful. And uh, we're here to watch some finals action. Are you we are. Real quick, just sent you the quick update of their most likely play champions here. So, uh, back to the very first week, the very first match we played, we we broadcasted. We watched Ward Turtle, who is on Team Bronze 5 Age, play the Kled game. Oh man, that Kled game. That absolutely ransacked whoever they went up against. I can't even remember who they played against. But as a result, Kled has basically been banned in every single one of their games ever since then. And that was the same with last week when we did the semifinals against them. He didn't get Kled. Uh, Gnar is a contested between both these teams, Evia's Bay and Ward Turtle. Both play a lot of Gnar. Definitely a banned straight Whoa. away at that. First pick, Shaco. I think Hello. that's... I th that's his most played, though. That is a Droid Killer's most played, sh Shaco. But both of them are Lee Sin players in Ass Respect. Just kind of touched on the bands. And then, uh, unless Yasuo is something changed on the side of either War Turtle or Shadow 2097, I think that's and a, for him. If I have a choice between Azir and Shaco, I'm always going to ban the Shaco. But hey, props to the prop. That it gets banned over a Shaco main. Like, yeah. he scared someone with that as ear at some point down the line. He must have. So I'm just going to move this stuff over here. I'm going to be also watching the room chat just in case they throw in something like a proxy pick. So we got eyes and ears on that uh, for everyone. Um, we should probably say who, uh, how much team. Now, first... Uh, Team Atlas is on the blue side for game one here. They are the third seed uh, in the division where um, Team I'm sorry, team, team Atlas is the number one seed, and they're on the blue side. The uh, Team Bronze 5 Age is on the red side for game one here, and they are the third seed going into their tournament, and they were able to uh, win in a best of three, two to one, uh, in the uh, game one, uh, last week in the semifinals where uh, Team Atlas was able to get a 2-0 victory against uh, disadvantaged leaguers, but, or not sorry, disadvantaged leaguers, Crimson Hellkites. But Crimson Hellkites jungle only you know can dc about halfway through the first game. Tragic, tragic And game. as a result, they kind of got run over in game one and kind of game two as well. Uh, Team Atlas was able to just... Uh, Power through, good solid 2-0, but it was the one seed versus the four seed, so... And if I'm not mistaken, through. Team Atlas was a finals in the finals last split, correct? Some of their players were. This team is actually new this split as a team. Um, so I think some of their players uh, were in the finals last split in this division. Um, and I think that may be the same for one of these players on... Bronze Five Age. I'm um, trying to remember I, exactly the, the not, splits and the teams. They're not ringing any bell, but there's a few of them on Team Atlas that I remember. Um, mm -hmm. But while we're waiting, I just want to. So I've got a little bit of a backstory on Ward Ward Turtle. He's the top laner for Bronze Five Age, and I was just. Talking to him the other day, we were playing some 1v1s because he plays Yasuo. I needed to practice against Yasuo. When the season started and he signed up, he was a gold 5, and he's climbed all the way to plat 5. So that is the story of why there's a plat 5 top laner on the bronze 5 age team. Yes. So... Props to him for climbing that ladder. Yeah, in the in the month and a half long of this season, he 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 put the Vantage work League, you know, to work. The Vantage League, the Vantage, you know, elite product. He put to excellent use, and you know, powered right right up the ladder, 
Um, he's he signed up to play with a buddy, right? Like on on his team. Yes, and that's there. His... There are that team, the Browns Five Age, um, has multiple friends on it. Yeah. Um. And so it's kind of weird that they have the uh, they have one silver person, the butter Freelo, the the jungler, and then they have three bronze players. And at the time, War, when they sent up War Turtle was. A was gold five at the beginning of the season. He, you know, has joined an entire rank during the uh, month and a half, almost two months here of the season. So, congratulations to him. Uh, so we should see definitely look at that top lane to be dynamic, right? Fiora versus Shen. That's a dynamic matchup as it is. That can go either way. It really depends on how well Shen can uh, block the auto attacks coming out of Fiora and the uh, and the poke damage, or and how well Fiora can, you know. Uh, Perry, the taunt from Shen, or any other hard CC that comes her and way. And the gank setup by Shen. Like yeah. Shaco, all you need to do is keep him there for a little bit, and Shaco can deal out the damage. So if he can get a good taunt off during a gank, that can be very, very uh, dynamic. But also the same with Fiora. If that Ivern hits a root, you know, Fiora only needs a few auto attacks before. She's really got you where she wants you. And also, I really like the team comp from Team Atlas. They have a Shaka who wants to jump into the team fight and assassinate. But you can't really blow him up if he has Shin ult, Lulu ult, Oriana ball. And FYI, when Oriana balls someone who's invisible, the ball goes invisible. So It's going to be dirty. I'm looking for some... Uh, some sneak attack Oriana ults. And then on the other team, the Bronze Five Age, they have a really good disengage team. We've got Alistar, Ivern, Syndra, all those champions can push people back. And then Twitch ult, he just has to sit in the back, attack the nearest person, and he hits the whole team if he wants to. He has the option to be an assassin. But he doesn't have to. He can just sit back there behind that line of disengage and fire down the enemy team while Fiora split pushes. So this is really going to be a strength versus strength team battle. One really wants to split push and disengage. One really wants to engage. And let's see what happens in the game. Yep, I'm really excited for this matchup. Uh, we've seen a lot of these. I've seen a lot of... We've seen. A, I've personally seen a lot of this division and a lot of uh, good plays coming out of this. Uh, we I've kind of touched on it with uh, Yokir Sheeran and George G. P. Burdell, George P. Burdell, and uh, Six and Cross about all the different strengths and strategies coming out from all the different other divisions that we've seen. And... I think these two teams definitely showed, especially in the semifinals, some real strengths and adaptations to the new, the, you know, after this midseason point. I mean, there's been no pro play on any of these patches yet, other than today when Korea just started playing. So a lot of these teams don't have anything, you know, optimal to watch. So they've been going with their own strengths and their own play styles. And I've absolutely been really enjoying that, watching these out of these uh, this division. Amo, I've got a fever. I've got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. More Let's go, cowbell. Psychopaths. I see that cowbell, <laughs> Alice. Yep, and it uh, looks like we do have a pause here. So let's run down the lineups here right, right quick as we get started. Uh, for uh, Team Atlas, we're going to have Eevee is Bay up in the top lane as Shen. A droid killer in the jungle on uh, Shaco. The Prophet playing mid lane Oriana. Ez is real. Still hasn't played as real yet this year on uh, Lucian, AD Carry. Uh, Mel Extra playing support Lulu. Ward Turtle up top on the split push Fiora. Butter Freelo running the lanky jungle Ivern. Shadow 2097 on mid lane Syndra. Alcen Res Tip. Uh, playing Twitch, AD Carry, and Psychopaz bringing the cowbell for Miner in support. Oh, invade Alistar. level one. You got Orion in a good position to spot them if they go any further. Lulu should be relatively safe as well, hiding in the backside of the bush. And we've talked about it, I think, with all of the casters on the team about the importance of making sure your wards are down in both sides when there is an Ivern in the game. Here's Lulu placing a defensive ward. Shaco, though, he adds 
very interesting style of gank pass starts abilities to just you know take a buff and go to any straight lane i'm no shaco just because i've played against shaco have you played any shaco I have played some Shaco. He's a mind so game champion, two right? Two seasons ago, I played the <laughs> heck out of Shaco. So, a droid killer knows what he's doing. He's getting set up. Look, Shen, really late invade as he saw his team all five leave because of Oriana. Great safe positioning, warding the red buff. Um, and so, everyone knows where everyone's going to be starting here. No real advantages. Uh, that being said, Shaco can show up level two. Level three, now, level one four. One thing that Bronze Five Age did that's really good that red ward. So Shaco has the ability take one buff, queue over the wall level two, and just hunt down your jungler and murder him. That ward really uh, saves the jungler from that fate had he chosen to go that route. Mm -hmm. Well, he, you know, he looks like he's just going to go for more classic clear as the, the Ivern went straight buff to buff and keeping making sure that he stays as uh, healthy and topped off as possible. As Shaco has gone the Smite Ignite strat, uh, no flash for him uh, in this game. So an extra, you know, a, you know, damaging ability coming on the side of, you know, the Shaco and uh, coming out in his ganks. Not a lot of uh, the CC coming out unless he wants to go, you know, top lane though. Not a lot, actually, other than not a lot of hard CC at all on the side of uh, you know Team Atlas here. No, not a ton of hard CC once they hit six. They have, C, but um, they've definitely got a stronger bot lane with the ranged auto attacking and spell casting bot laner. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got some mid lane action. They're dancing around a little bit. But here comes Shaco's first gank, and Twitch is going to flash away a great headbutt by the, uh, or sorry, yeah, headbutt, pulverize. I think he got both off. Uh, the Alistar saves uh, his jungler, or saves them from the jungler. And Twitch, though, I did have to burn flash. Heal was burned as well. I'm not sure if that was quite necessary. Uh, but they're alive and able to tr try and stick it out in lane as he does have a slight CS lead, but they are pushing into the uh, Lulu Lucian here. As uh, Ward Turtle looked, got a bunch of trading down on the top lane. It looks like the Evia's Bay has gone for the super regen build here of the two rejuve beads, and uh, he probably started off with five health pots. To, that uh, is a really on. wise decision by him because he's not going to out damage that Fiora early. Well, you you play this matchup, I imagine, quite a bit. Oh, I do. What's yeah. The strategy. Uh, the strategy is you have to figure out. The, it's all based on the parry and the block. Um, you can prevent uh, a lot of damage with your blocking with auto attack, and you can have to make sure you do not. If your taunt actually gets landed as a taunt and not as a parry, so. It, it's, it's a skill matchup in that aspect, and as long as you stay equal with Fiora, uh, and you can uh, escape her all in, then you're fine. Uh, but it's, if she starts getting like half an item ahead, you're in trouble. But if Shen gets half an item ahead, Fiora is pretty much done. Ooh, looks like we've got a ganking coming top lane. No, no. Just a visit to say hi. How's it going? Shaco is camping with... this bot lane. He comes, he's going to go back in, and they're going to go straight in on the Twitch, and there's the plant. Is he going to get feared? Alistar's the one that gets feared. He does have flashes. The exhaust went down. The ignite is on him, and the ticking Ooh, he's finishes him off for the first blood. The Shaco's third trip to bot lane finally nets the first blood kill, and the rest of the summoners out of that lane, where his team has only been spent the ignite. So, first blood, well worth the ignite so far for Shaco. Yeah, good gank. Uh, the Alistar tried to disengage and probably saved his eight. Um, in the process, unfortunately, he uh, died. And I want to give major props to the Prophet playing Orianna in mid lane. Syndra is a really tough matchup for Orianna, but he's doing a great job dodging the cues, and whenever you dodge Syndra cues, you get free her ass on the Syndra. Mm -hmm. And he's turned that into almost a 20 CS lead here five minutes in. 
Yeah. Oh, there's the all sorry coming out barriers in flash by the Syndra right as we touch base on this lane. Oriana goes for the all in. If she had ignite or exhaust, maybe would have been able to take her down uh, with more kills, or maybe just you know had a little bit more mana. Uh, she is down, but that's m two more sums down on the side of Bronze Five Age, and Shaco now can make a trip to a mid lane here coming up and make that extremely impactful. Yeah, if I was that Oriana, I, my jungler, hey, no sums, no escape abilities mid lane, that's free gold for you. But that Shaco has to be a little bit sad because even though he got a good gank off bot lane, Ivern did a good job, said, oh, I know where you are, time to eat all of your jungle camps so you don't get any gold. Mm -hmm. Well, Shaco Ooh. may be going up top, up top here. Top lane? No wards, I don't think. Nope, there are no vision up here, and this is the key right now. Shen right now is down like over 25 CS, which is fine because Fiora hasn't spent any of that extra gold. So the longer Shen can keep Fiora in lane, that means the longer it's going to be before she spends that money and gets oh, we've ahead. Got bot lane action but going there's on. exhaust on the side of Lu in the bot lane, and Flash in. Lucian's trying to go for the all in. Flash in, Glitter Lance by Luxra. Finish auto attack by Ezreal. Takes down Alstripton yet again. So, yes. with, or this time he dies instead of the uh, Alistar. So, both deaths so far in the bottom lane is uh, for Bronze 5 Age. Off. Uh, or successful disengage by the Syndra. Ooh, Shen has the made Syndra's it to. Toasted. Yes. Shen has made it to level 7 now. So, uh, definitely going to need some wave clear to uh, help push off against this uh, Fjord up top, but has made it basically to the point where not punished for the terrible uh, wave clearing early, and now should just be able to just go straight tank and hopefully survive to use the ult to go in and save a teammate when absolutely necessary. Oh, jeez. Ooh, great job, Oriana comp. As soon as that Syndra's E was down, the Oriana just stepped up. She said, oh, I know you don't have a stun. And you, she stayed, the uh, Syndra stayed too close, and the Oriana just one shot, or one combo, I should say. And uh, the Shaco was on the red buff doing some counter wave right as it spawned, was able to uh, get it as Ivern had back to uh, pick up some items here. He's going to have to summon Daisy to help clear out the mid wave against... Uh, against this Orion who's really pushing in the the farm differential seems to be you know going back and forth as we see uh, you know war turtle way up in CS but in return the profit is up in CS uh, the droid killers up in you know minion camps the Lucian is up a kill and assist to the you know and a little bit of experience on the twitch here but twitch has been able to farm it out pretty nicely for his aspect as we see, Shaco's going to go in as well. And they've gone right in onto the cow, who pops the ult with for the damage reduction and flashes the calling as Twitch is just trying to lay some poke damage in return. And Ivern's going to come here, ignite, actually, I think, finish off the uh, muscle feeling us off Alistar. As the Shen ult's going to come down as Daisy had been summoned. Polymorph Twitch is drawn a drop to Lucian. And with Shen down here and his wave push up to tower, he's actually going to burn his teleport to make it back up there. Not sure if that was uh, needed here. Uh, as, uh, they probably could have pushed in and taken tower or the first dragon man everyone on team atlas is playing solid the oriana winning her matchup that she shouldn't win shaco's all over the map mm -hmm. top lane playing a losing matchup not giving up too much cs not giving up kills holding his turret great job by everyone so far mm -hmm. and you know there's been five kills and other than the solo kill in mid this lulu has been on point with her cc and using the proper abilities as we see uh damage going back and forth shaco uh you know using oh, that, that invisibility was... to go opposite direction there's the fear from the boxes pretty good escape there as well with the what first tower here there, that was a shaco main playing shaco mm -hmm. the mind games some people are good at them, some people are not, and the Shaco players, they're usually very adept at messing with not the invisibility and the, and, you know, and the skills and tendencies of a lot of players. Oh, 
good taunt by Evie's Bay under tower is uh, you know three Midlane shots about to get another kill gets uh onto a ward turtle so he's gonna have to try and play careful he only has the Dorn's blade for uh, life steals a moment as shen's just you know trying to rejuve uh through this damage we're looking here i don't know oh sorry i thought that the duo would be able to get the Oriana, but it looked like they did not want to pull the trigger. I don't think they had enough ward coverage to be comfortable. Mm. Gotcha. As we just sort of uh, touch base on that uh, ward coverage, it is uh, so far, uh, you know, as Ivern starts clearing out, slightly in favor of this, uh, you know, uh, one team here, Team Atlas. Uh, doing a pretty good job as we see Shaco's going to go in here and onto the Syndra, places a box behind and swash out by the Syndra. Lulu with the Glitter Lance, not enough to uh, keep her in place as she's going to blast Cone it out. They will be taking the Scuttle Crab here as, uh, you know, the return. They keep pinging on Blue, but Oriana's just going to straight up, uh, you know, kill Syndra under tower yet again. That's two kills while the rest of her team, you know, was setting up for Dragon. I was busy watching that instead of mid lane. Yeah, the Cinder got greedy and stayed to farm health, so the Oriana Flash QW'd. And with that Dragon taken, and now with no mid laner, the second tower going down in the side of Team Atlas. This is looking extremely strong uh, for them. Coming out, you know, like you said, full cylinders for everyone across the board. The only one that uh, seems to be struggling a little bit is, you know, Evie is Bay up in top lane on the Shen, but the Shen versus Fiora matchup, sometimes it's legitimately just don't die until you're tanky enough. And that's all you need to do. Especially when all of your other lanes are winning pretty strong, getting kills and assists and towers. Yep, and now they're making a good rotation, sending the Shen down to catch a wave 1v2 with the threat of a Shaco gank. And their bot lane goes top, and Fiora is not going to outplay a Lulu Fushin. There's mm. just too many shields, too much dash, too, just too much everything that she can't deal with. Yeah, she has started off with that Black Cleaver, which is nice, but with no Tiamat to help clear massive parts of the wave, her wave pushing ability is slightly slowed. Um, compared, you know, because she went for the, you know, the armor shred item first. It does have the cooldown reduction, which is nice. It's just, I just, it's not going to be able to keep up in the 2v1. And first tower is already gone. And in fact, since b bottom half towers are gone, Shen doesn't particularly matter or care that if his tower gets pushed in and gets, gets taken down. Because I think, you know, teams have pinged Rift Herald. I think that's going to be the next objective coming up before even the dra next dragon spawns. Yeah, new Rift Herald, really good tower pushing ability. It really makes the enemy team group up um, in whatever lane you put it. So it can be used for dives very successfully. Or if you have a good split pusher, uh, that person can keep the Rift Herald. Oh, we got some no. jungle action going Alexa on. Alexstra comes in, and Oriana's just going to straight up solo out the Twitch with one last more auto attack as Daisy was sent in on the three group here. Flash out from the knockup uh, from uh, not exactly sure who. Uh, it must have been the Shaco uh, dash here. So they're going to fight off Daisy as Ivern came in to prevent them from uh, taking the Rift Herald. This entire time, though, Shen's been able to get some uh, farm going in the bot lane, catch up in a little bit of levels as well. Oriana, though, that was a nice solo kill. The Twitch opened up on her, and she just, you know, dumped the ult and, you know, the whole combo, and then with two auto attacks, was able to finish him off. Yep, she is very strong right, right now. Even before that, she had two kills, 130 CS, 15 minutes in. She is... Uh, not going to be an easy person to take down, even if you're Twitch and get the jump on her from camouflage. Mm -hmm. And Twitch is going to open up on the Shen here a little bit. I don't, I mean, Shen's, you know, was three levels up, now just two uh, Twitch just hit level eight. I'm not exactly sure, you know, if he can really do anything other than just lay some harass down. Shen can definitely get away. And with all the armor he's built already, should be able to, like, kind of sustain through what Twitch can put out with just the Blade of the Rune King. And as you see, he clears out a ward. He's just here to, until they get the push uh, out top lane and maybe take that tower or look to get the Rift Herald. 
Shaco goes over with the Oriana ball. This is probably going to be a nearly dead. There's the ult from Oriana, flashed out by Butterfreelo, able to uh, save his life. Now they're stuck with Syndra on the other side. As Syndra lands a nice QE combo, throws a uh, scuttle. Now Oriana is in trouble fighting the uh, Fiora, and this may be good, good for. Uh, but the Shen ult's going to bring in the Shen who's going to flash taunt grits onto War Turtle. And with the Fiora down, there's no stopping the rest of this team from taking this top tower. Or Rift Herald, whichever one they want to go for. Great job by Team Atlas committing to that fight. Uh, one thing most people don't know about Orianna ult, it stays wherever you cast it as soon as you press on. Which is why I don't really like to do the ER combo unless I know the person I'm doing that to. Too many times they just run back the other way or just stop to auto attack. And Oriana trying to lay off uh, so, some poke here and get them away from the Rift Herald. Someone's got to take that thing. Looks like it's going to be onto Lucian. Shen Tonson from behind gets in onto the AD carry with the Oriana ball. Massive damage comes out as Alistar is running you know, with some peel in the back with the help of Daisy and Ivern Slows is able to uh, get away, but they live with their lives. Rift Herald has been picked up. Now, Shaco has gone Tiamat into Sunfire Cape with, a, you know, level one boots. Still has this, you know, mach machete item to start the jungle. As, is that a classic build for him, or... I think with the the new Shaco, yeah, you just keep the one piece for experience, and you don't even really need your smite him. No, I know the the Tiamat is great in help the clears. Is the he absolutely needs the Tiamat, um, but I think the tank item versus smite him is a personal choice. I think you can go with smite him, but I have not played Shaco in quite a while, so I would defer actual. Shaco player on that. Is he looking maybe to defense up in case he's the one that has to go into split push mode against this Fiora and it's it's armor and more wave clear at that aspect? If you know, Shen I think it's more of just he's going to be the ball delivery system and he can't just die. Right, he has to stay long enough to get in there and do some damage, and he doesn't really need to build full damage to assassinate someone. He can still assassinate people with this build. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as we check down, it looks like Lucian is the one with the uh, the Rift Herald here as the next dragon spawns. It is going to be our second Cloud Drake, um, as uh, we see you know, them aspect. They already have one Cloud Drake, another Dr Cloud Drake, which absolutely helped them move around the map here. And control if they've already taken down two outer towers, and probably could uh, you know if they wanted to five man up top after they took the dragon could did it. They're eight zero in kills right now. They're up you know basically f almost five k in gold. It's it's a really strong performance across the team here. Yep, I agree. And let's see if they can close it out though, because they've. I'm going to say that they only have a 5k lead and while that's big at 20 minutes they've had a 4 to 5k lead for 5 or 6 minutes now so they haven't been able to grow that lead by significant amounts and the longer the game goes the less a 4 to 5k gold lead means i'm interested that shen has I don't. I understand the Kindle Gem for you know the CDR and then you know, but it's it's something that it looks like his first item is going to be a Dead Man's instead of a Sunfire Cape or even the Tiamat would be really helpful to help with some of that. Is the sh oh my gosh Oriana plus the uh, Shaco over the wall and Shaco is actually going to use his ult to dodge the Syndra uh, ult as well is uh you know going to fight here in the mid lane he is eventually goes drops to the alistar twitch was able to make it out before the ignite finished him off and barely just lived through that as the rift herald is going to be punted on the other side of the tower trying to before it gets taken down lulu it was a great attempt there by atlas they just didn't pull the trigger all at the same time and as a result shaco dies they lose that rift herald advantage while they almost get that tier two they did not actually secure it now they've given over that uh you know that kill gold and experience it did go on the alistar but twitch and uh Syndra also picked up an assist here 
Yeah, and just like that, the gold gap is narrowing. Um, you really want a, a full tower and then chip damage on the next whenever you use Herald, but like you said, they uh, they were not quite coordinated. If they'd used Rift Herald right as that fight went down, they might have gotten some more uh, use out of it, but I mean, this is still what, the first month of New Rift Herald? Mm -hmm. So, we've still got a ways to go to really boost to the New Rift Herald. And in, across all the divisions, the Rift Herald's usage has been I'm going to say really clean for something that's such uh, new to the game, especially in team play. I mean, we've just basically seen it in the playoffs. In all the divisions, we've seen different usages of it. And while that wasn't the most successful Rift Herald, um, it was still a lot better than I've seen in a bunch of my solo queue games, right? Where people just drop it randomly uh, for no other purposes. Ivern's going to get polymorphed here into the full calling and combo from Alistar with the headbutt. Pulverize going to come in from behind. And Redemption's going to go off with zoom it out here's we got five more cardos twitch coming off by himself behind no tanks whatsoever gets absolutely obliterated by the uh you know oriana there with the shockwave combo shen alternating i don't even not sure if that was necessary but was able to uh you know prevent any further engage from the enemy here as uh they're all going to go back to lanes and start pushing them forwards oh you uh guessed wrong on the shen first item I did. I Usually you need a little bit more wave clear with Shen. That's why I usually go Tiamat or Sunfire first. Or at least get the Nami Cinder. Uh, Warmog. I think that it would have been a little bit better to hold off the uh, Warmog's armor for a second item. Because he did not have enough health to trigger its passive yet. Yeah, that is the, the semi-problem with Warmog's. But Shen does have a scaling health ability. And uh, and it, it's helpful in the in the heal and the long sustain lanes. Great, especially when you go the double rejuve bead start. I mean, you're going straight to that war mogs. Um, I just don't think it's quite it's quite enough, right? Like right now, if you had a sunfire cape or team at, they'd be able to push into this wave a lot faster to get it to tower than they currently are. But if it keeps them aligned and sustained on the map for longer then uh, more power to him. Yeah, and I, I just feel like Team Atlas, while they got off to a great start, they're losing a little bit of sight of what their win condition is. They're getting distracted by the split pusher. They're not forcing issues on the tower as much as they could if they really went for it. Mm -hmm. Now, Oriana has been pushing up this mid lane pretty hard, and that is now down to a quarter health. So we have both tier twos in the bottom half of this map at a quarter or less health on the scenes of Team Bronze 5H, and they're gonna or they're gonna have to you know play defensive on the side of the map. Is I want to see more wards there, but everyone keeps getting distracted by these top laners and the and the split pushing aspect up there, and they keep sending different people up there to defend or push uh, separately. Chaco's looking for a twitch right now. Well, let's touch in on that then. Oh. Double invisibility. Oh. Not safe in the bush there, as there is the Shaco. Open up the full combo with the Ignite. Twitch is going to turn around with his own ult combo, as Lucian's now here as well. Uh, I think they're going to try and push in real quick to get this tower. Lucian dashes into Alistar just to back him off. And there goes down a tower. We'll catch in with the top laners as Shen actually was able to make it back to base. So we go back up here. Cullen comes out as Twitch was trying to lay some damage. And a nice QE from Sintra with the W makes a flash out of Lulu. And that is 30 seconds before Dragon spawns. And it's our third air drake. Super you fast like moving. Drakes? I like air drakes, especially when you get three. But I don't, I don't like three in a row. I actually really enjoy air drakes for how fast you can rotate. It's like everyone has... Except you can still have the unique passives of other boots. <laughs> yes, the extra uh, movement speed is a, uh, a great help, especially with this, uh, you know, you Shen split push and the Shaco mobility that he wants to have running around the map. Um... And, and we get another dash. dragon if they take it right now. 
Yes, we will. Uh, it's n as long as they take it, actually, in the next, uh, like, two to three minutes. I think we should do six-minute spawn time, so they got to take it before, what, like, 30, 29, so... Uh, they're yeah, so we get one more, but that's it. Yep. We will have four dragons, uh, or, uh, you know, let's see what it is. Mountain after that. I don't know if mountain is necessarily what, uh, you know... Team Atlas wanted with the last one, but I guess Mountain at this point is better than uh, Ocean. Is we've passed that point of uh, mid game. Although the sieging with the Ocean can be nice, but they're not really a siege team. Yeah, they're not a siege comp. They yeah. would like, and the Mountain's kind of good for them because they have more to burn down the Baron faster. Mm -hmm. And if they're not oh. able to jump in on a turret with the four of the group of the group of four from the enemy team defending it, baiting Baron is a really good way to pull that four off of a turret. Okay, as we see Lulu coming up here on rotation to try and help the Shen, Fiora's picked up red buff because of Ivern um, aspect, you know, just being able to pick up buffs and give them to your allies. Now Shen has picked up that Nami Cinder. He has to get to 2,750 health. He's basically 100 health away before the Warmog's passive goes in. As Twitch is actually going to straight up open up on the uh, Shaco, who opened up on him in lane. And Shaco is going to have to ult to try to get away from this Fiora. And there is the uh, ult coming out from Shen in the ball shield as well, taking down the Twitch. And this may be bad for the Fiora as Blast Cone sends the Fiora safety while Lucian lays down the calling, not going to get anything done now shen taking a uh, stun combo after being pulverized by the cow disengage and the, the the top lane towers stick around as they keep fighting up here but then no one ever takes either tower but the position on baron is really strong right now for atlas as they're going to go in on the cow who's just trying to lay down some boards and just finish him off really fast didn't even have his ult did go down and with the blast cone sending them into baron pit and all five team members here ivern's gonna have to get a steal here if they want to you know prevent this game from breaking wide open yeah i don't know if the baron steal is very probable he can go for it but it might be better to just save the well, death daisy's and, doing uh, work right now is sh you know he's gonna go in he does get it because he's no one no stayed way. on the baron and now he's there by himself the help with redemption twitch is gonna open up and maybe pick up a kill but he's gonna go absolutely down to the oriana oh i guess lulu steals that one with the help of picks store baron a little bit of disorganization from the bronze five age we it was see it was the redemption multiple people multiple people at just slivers of health Two of the team went in, two of the team stayed around the pit, not committing. Gotta make that call mm -hmm. one way or the other. Just let him die, mm -hmm. he got the smite off, we're good, or everyone goes in right now. Yep, as Fjord's gonna teleport back up here in with the level advantage on Shen. Now has the completed, uh, you know, Titanic uh, Hydra, right? No, nope. Yeah, Titanic Hydra. Uh, yes. Titanic is now going to be able to split push really hard into the Shen. And with the help of Baron, as long as the rest of her team can establish a either a 4-1 or a strong positioning in the, in the other lanes and let her split push, the help of Baron should be uh, you know further advanced than the Shen at the moment. And uh, because Shen did go for that Warmogs, which helps kind of. But she's just going to fight the uh, Shaco. And now Lulu is here with the help of her teammate. She should just go in on this. Oriana lands the EQ. Well, it's not enough. It's down goes two members. And Oriana now has running for her life. The culling from Lucian deals a lot of damage. But not a lot to the minion wave. And that's what they need to be worried about. Shen does not, or did have ult. Decided not to use it there. And now with Baron, it looks like Bronze 5 Age. They are powering up in this mid game. Is they're going to try and kill the cow, but the ult from Alistar is going to keep himself alive. Daisy's now here for some peel. That's one tower, and these towers start falling on the side of Bronze 5 Age. They are going to get a large gold swing with this Baron power play. Yep, great use of Baron. Good job collapsing down on an opportunity, taking the objective, immediately going back to fix lane. That's some good rotational play. Mm -hmm. 
And this is what can happen if you give someone bronze. They can, you know, play catch up. And with all those towers golding the standing, that's, you know, gold that hasn't been accessed or, you know, hasn't been tapped into yet. And, you know, with uh, Team Atlas, they were up, what, 5, 6K? And this Baron play has already reduced that down to 3. Yep, great use of Baron. Great job on the Baron steal. Great use of Baron so far. And... Shin's ult is up, but his teleport is down. So even if there is a fight, he can teleport to the... Oh, we got a fight. Yeah, well, Shaco was caught trying to steal wolves. As he's going to go back over the wall next to some plants. And he's going to get away. Great play by Droid Killer in Dirty the escape. Player. We talked about it like two or three times already. The ability for Shaco to uh, get in and out of a sticky situation brings War Turtle down on the Fiora, and as that War Turtle has to come down to try and help collapse on the Shaco, his dragon spawning now allows Shen to get just enough time to take out this tower. We'll see how they want to set up for Dragon though. Yeah, a uh, good escape by the Shaco, and I think Fiora maybe should have just stayed top and continued to split, try, try to bait Shin into teleporting, and then keep the split, have the rest of your team disengage, but uh, I don't know, maybe that's not how you want to play it. I'm not a big Fiora. Fiora is an excellent in 1v1s and then coming in kind of late to the team fights if they're still even and mopping them up. Um, or you're just a, an ult bot to try and get the AoE clearing as we see a flash coming out from Syndra. Now this is what you want to do. You want to flake from behind and get onto a priority target like the Orianna but does have to burn the ult as we're going to go big here. And it looks like Shen's going to be able to come in with the uh, you know ult to save her as Fiora's going to continue in onto this Orianna as we watch the bottom half of the map as, you know... Shaco, Lulu, and Lucian are dashing all around, trying to get away from this Daisy and Syndra. Shen now in trouble. Goes in over to the pit to Dragon. And Dragon reset, which knocks Shen out of the pit and Fiora back. But the slow on to Shen. Fiora's going to be able to dash in and take that one. That's what you want to do. You want to take out the highest priority target. And that was the Orianna who did a okay ult, but not enough as... Shaco's looking to go in here for the dragon steal with the Lulu shields. Actually, we see our second steal of the game, this time by the Shaco. Gets the dragon. Now, I don't. The dragon for that one kill is fine, but the team fight beforehand did not go in the favor of Team Atlas. Eevee, no, War Turtle. Great job by the Fiora much to sing better job. the Orianna, and they forced Lulu ult and Shen ult and Redemption to keep her alive as long as they did. And then the other side of the team fight that caused a massive advantage. For the bronze five age mm -hmm. uh, twitch still got assassinated and sorry buddy but you're against a shako so that's going to happen i th he got some good damage off he could have positioned a little better but he still did get some good damage off that fight and they did not have the lulu shin combo to uh soak up his damage mm-hmm well, Lucian was able to, uh, I mean, but he, his damage was enough to kick the, you know, the, the Shaco, the Lucian, and the Lulu out of the fight down towards yep. the, uh, to, to the river, because they could not, no longer, you know, try and put up or deal with the damage. As Shen's going to go in, he's two levels up onto this uh, Twitch, and Twitch is going to flash out as Fiora t uh, teleports in to try and save him. Now... Interesting interaction here. We have a Fiora who's level 17 ulting, teleporting in to save the level 14 Twitch while the level 15 Shen uh, was, you know, laying the smack down on him. It just shows you the drastic and where each team is putting their resources, and they're really looking for the Fiora to carry in a split push situation. But if she has to keep using her teleport or keep collapsing in on these team fights, she's not getting much done across the map. Other than, you know, that one, you know, couple situations where she's killing a prime target. No, they're not able to get the, uh, the split push online. Basically because Team Atlas has been doing a good job of wave management and forcing around objectives. Not giving the Fiora time, not doing a little dance around a turret for five minutes while the Fiora split pushes. 
you know, they're saying, oh, we're warding Baron, we're warding Dragon, we're actually trying to dive people under a turret, we're in your jungle picking people off. They're not just sitting in a lane, ho-hum, oh, what do we do against the split pusher? They're pressuring even harder than the split pusher, making Bronze 5 Ages life pretty hard. And that's and that kind of shows across the map, right? The top the top tower just barely went down a few minutes ago, um, whereas uh, Shen's going to taunt through the root and get off some damage onto this Ivern, but the shield and slow is going to keep him away, help with the uh, twitch slow cast the cast with the slow there keeping you know this strong but the rest of the map has like been completely open for uh team atlas you would you think at this by this point you're trying to put shen in bot lane and try and get your four-man group to deal some more damage on the top half of the map and not let it set up to let you butter freelo get another baron steal that baron steal kept them in the game if Team Atlas has had uh, had Baron with the amount of pressure they're putting on, with the Shin having super minions to shove Fiora back, that might have been game already. So, great job by Butterfree Low with that steal. And we've, we've kind of talked about that gold advantage that we saw about the 20 minute mark reach its peak at what about just under 7k right about 7k and then slowly sit about that 6k mark and then drastically drop to about 3k uh you know after that baron steel has now been pushed back up to almost 4k uh with the help of the fight that but you know they've taken four towers or five towers sorry to one and there's a lot of free gold standing here especially with this baron coming up and how the teams want to play around it uh, they're getting to the point where the gold deficit is starting to not matter. 4K at 35 minutes at this rank of play. It's good to have, don't get me wrong, but just looking at the mid lane, Oriana has three completed items, Syndra has two and three quarters. So it's just that one quarter, that combined effect of one item and obviously Fiora is way up in items because she's way up in gold but just across the team it's just barely any difference whereas at 15 minutes that same 4k your components versus a full item which is a much larger power differential mm -hmm. and we've seen Shaco has gone for the Trinity Force and now probably going to go into the uh, Titanic Hydra, or uh, not Titanic? I don't know. Titanic is what uh, Fiora has. The uh, the other Hydra item, uh, Ravenous Hydra. Ravenous Hydra. Thank you. Uh, with the the two Dorans. Uh, That's uh, a strange things. build. I guess he just wants a life steal. Normally, if you get a tank item like that, you go for the uh, Titanic. Yeah. to deal the more damage because it will deal more damage if you're really tanky but it just doesn't have that life steal mm -hmm. and we are reaching that three minute pause spot here so we are actually going to switch off the uh, the stream because once the pause does reach three minutes this, that's where the spectator delay is so just in case anyone gets any uh, itchy uh, f figures here to look at the stream during the pause. We don't want to give any advantages away to either team uh, with the with the three minute delay. But the 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 Lucian, of, you know. But t sorry, sorry, Shaco. But Shaco has given up on his smite him. He's level fifteen yep. now. The, the smite items they do give you extra damage versus monsters. Baron being an important monster to deal extra damage to, since you've already lost oh, one. The pause is resuming. Okay. As uh, we jump in here, the uh, you know the extra damage to uh, monsters is probably going to be important, considering you've already lost one smite fight with yeah, the Ivern. If, if I was playing the Shaco, I would hold on to the green smite item until I have a full five items or i guess full six with that mm -hmm. and then sell that for a full build because shaco with six real items is better than him with a smite item 
But, but the uh, wards would be so much helpful right yeah, now. Yeah, the wards would be very valuable. Or even a red smite, just for that true damage on whoever he's trying to assassinate. Well, there's not much more assassinating now. Fiora's going to have way too much uh, defense against that. Uh, Syndra it does have that Syndra Banshee's Twitch will always be. Twitch, I think, is going to be the actual one. And it's all going to depend on how f close or far away that person is from Alistar and uh, Ivern. Ivern's got a lot of shielding right now. And, well, Alistar, that headbutt pulverized combo is absolutely devastating. As Twitch, Shaco's going to go in onto Twitch, who walked away from Alistar. The from that is Shaco's going to ult and pop the Twitch, and now Alistar is here, takes it, calling to the faces. A Daisy has been summoned to lay down some uh, peeling for the support. Shaco is now off and running, does not have to use the Shen ult, and you just talked about the pick damage from Shaco. There it yeah, was. Yeah, that was a little bit unfortunate for the Twitch's part. He wasn't on a ward, the he was, Shaco got lucky, but he that was, was also a pink just ward. a greedy place to back. He was on his own pink ward as they absolutely destroy Psychopaz, trying to get back to that mid tower as uh, Syndra is here in bot lane looking at this Shen and with that last you know minute and a half there of the two picks that's basically should set them up for a nice dragon uh, or a nice Baron All Baron right, sorry that's what Baron, I Baron not see. dragon I saw the dragon timer sh pop up on my screen uh, uh, Baron is going to go here. Ivern, can he get it too? This Ivern steal number two? Nope. Unsuccessful. No. Shaco's going to get that one, and Ivern's going to go down. And with that happening, they're just going to be going to clear out some wards. All five members on the map have Baron play. Shen has been in this bot lane prepping this wave to get in. And with the Baron and minions should be able to, you know, at least keep Fiora down here in bot lane as the rest of his team looks to take that tier 2 in top and the, you know, inhibitor tower in mid. Oh, they're doing a 1-3-1. They're sending the Shaco top. I guess they've got some decent disengage with Orianna Shockwave and move ult and speed up. I think their goal here is with this push just to get uh, this outer tier 2. Send your, use the bower, Baron and Powered Recall, get back, get some healing, buy some items, s make sure your dragon's good take. If you take the dragon with the Baron and make one really hard push, look to end the game in like a one, two minutes, within a one minute span. Yeah, they've got four regular dragons. Yeah. So that elder will just destroy. And it looks oh. like... We've got Sha some tension brewing. Shaco actually turned those long swords into a Yomu's ghost blade. We were both oh, wrong. Man. He's going full offense with the Sunfire Cape. <laughs> the, just the, I guess help with the uh, the clearing in the jungle and the uh, when he gets to uh, wave here and with the dragon here. And this is going to be a fight or f you know situation, probably for a bronze five H. They can't. I'd rather fight them in front of Dragon while they have Baron instead of in lane with Baron up minions. Shen's going to be up in top lane, dealing, you know, getting, well, trying to get up some splush. Syndra top oh, lane. Well, never mind. I, or I missed it. Oriana comboed the Twitch. Just, you know, Q, R, W, you're dead. And yep. with uh, the Twitch dead and Syndra and Shen in top lane duking it out, there's no real chance here for a steal. That's going to be a free Elder Dragon. Now Shen just is, looks took a ton of damage from Syndra and a poke. Uh, didn't actually burn ults or anything. No magic resists, so Syndra laying down a lot of damage is, is against that. But he with the Warmogs, he should be able to heal that up really quickly and continue on this. Looks like they're going to go back to the one through one Now they have Baron up minions and that extra true damage burn from Dragon. These towers should be falling relatively fast here. And as long as they keep this three-man group disengaged, flash out from Lucian as the shields and uh, kept, you know, the Syndra ult basically non-existent as we see two people fighting Shen in top lane uh, while Shaco's got the split push down and bot. And there goes one tower. Bronze 5 is going to have to go for an all-in, but with Alistar going down, that's their tankiest member dropping. Fjord taking so much poke because of this true damage burn, and there's another 
tower dropping with that inhibitor going down to Shaco, who tried to assassinate in onto Twitch, not necessarily able to. Shaco escaped. Now goes another inhibitor. Uh, you might be looking is, at the end of the game right here. We are yes. that three was, turrets, three inhibs, great Baron power play. Oh, by Team Atlas! It was a great Baron into a tower into Elder Dragon into that the trio there, the trifecta. As we see, they're just going. Twitch is going to open up, but he's going to die so fast. Not a chance here on the Fiora dashing in and out. Redemption. They're going for kills instead of trying to catch a min wave to uh, push it in. They will take out the most fed member of uh, you know Bronze Five Age as Lucian dashing in and out, clearing things you know out. And I think Baron has actually just gone off, so no more Baron. But Dragon is still here. Syndra trying to do the best to clear the minion waves. But all five are spawning double, or both ways are spawning double super minions right now, and lots well, of them are coming not in. They're there yet, though. Well, they do have the Elder Dragon burn, which yeah. is absolutely helping this Shaco shred through that top portion of the tower and that second tower here. As the shields are going to come out, Syndra's going to try and does not ult in time. It was one second off cooldown when she died. And there's the Alistar dropping right as it goes in. That's the end of the game. Game one's gonna go to uh, to Team, Team Atlas. Atlas. Great job, Team Atlas. Great finishing close off. They say a lot of times on Lower ELO Minor, the closing out the game, uh, not a clear strategy or plan. Sometimes the games get sloppy at the very end. That was, other than the one Baron like mistake in the mid game lull there, when they got that second Baron, that was like on point. We do it like they're just going down a checklist. We do this, we do this, we do this, and it worked to a T. No one died. Really smooth. Yep, I want to give some huge props to Shen. Playing a rough matchup, he got Flame Horizon, but he helped carry the game. Not dying to Fiora, ulting in at crutch times, just managing the waves. I don't think top turret died. Now nope. that's a full team effort, but Shin, as the top laner, he has to keep an eye on those side lanes, watching where the minions are, watching where other people are, and say, hey, this lane is pushing, we need to go fix this lane. And uh, He showed up in bot lane a couple times when it was needed too. The yep. side lanes didn't die, and the only time they lost mid is when they, you know, there was a pick in mid, and then the other team five manned it. Yeah, but obviously, great game by, you know, Oriana, by the bot lane, by the jungle. I mean, those are apparent, right? You see those things. You see the Shaco going in, assassinating the Twitch. What you don't really see, it's not as obvious, is the Shin going, fixing waves so that when they do get that pick, oh, hey, we've got minions. We take this tower now. Mm-hmm. Really good aspect of uh, of the game t to look into. So as we kind of to touch base on the details here and just kind of look at the advanced stats, it was it was kind of uh, it looked like Team Atlas jumped off to a really early lead and they were able to uh, play with that lead consistently and it kind of got chipped away and pushed back a little bit, but they stayed consistent in their pressure to a point. And then once they, you know, hit their next item sp spike, they're able to push in a little bit more before the enemy team would hit their spike, and then push in a little bit more. And they took it, you know, pretty s slow, but methodically and together. Notice how both of the, you know, outer towers and the middle towers in the bottom and mid, they dropped within seconds of each other, right? Within like 10, 15 seconds. One dropped, then the other dropped. And then so both of those lanes are doing their systems together, and that meant that the bottom half of the map had to be focused, and that way Shen did allow Shen to have an easier time early against a, a you know, hard lane matchup in the Fiora, as we just sort of check in here on some of the stats. Yeah, and I feel pretty bad for that Twitch. There were, He could have positioned better in some... But you've got an Orianna whose range is almost as long as your base auto attack range who can blow you up. You've got the Shaco that can blow you up. 
you've got the Lucian who will dash into you during laning phase, or if you're just a little bit too close in the team fight, he'll dash sideways out of your ult and blow you up. Like there were so many people that can blow him up and did blow him up. And Alistar's One a good peeler, thing. but Alistar can't peel off the Oriana ball. Or can't peel off Shaco if Shaco, you know, goes into clone, you know, into clone and messes with Alistar's combo. Yep. I mean, One other thing I want to say about Bronze Five Age is I don't feel like their mid laner was entirely comfortable on Syndra. I feel like they might have wanted that champion for their comp. Um so I would hope that they can get their mid laner on a different champion not Syndra maybe he's more comfortable on um because not just for the laning phase he missed out on a lot of he didn't necessarily miss his skill shots in team fights but they could have been placed differently on different targets that could have yielded more damage it's damage opportunity cost if you will mm -hmm. um Sometimes I mean, not that those flights would have the fights would have been easy for him, but there was a lot more that you have to play Syndra kind of at a level above where he is playing because she doesn't have that same sustained damage as an Oriana does, where Oriana can just keep moving her ball around dealing sustained damage. Syndra requires that you get that pick, blow that person up with your ult. And then you have decent sustained damage with your Q and some stuns, but uh, you don't have the same amount that other mid lane champions do. And that can be hard going into Shaco, who can dodge your ult, and Lulu, who ult counters yours, and Oriana with the giant shield, and Shen with the giant shield, right? Like, your, you know, pop one person is really makes it harder. So, uh,. I think uh, we're going to be jumping into uh, game two here in uh, just a minute. I'm going to get something to drink uh, while we uh, switch over here. So uh, we'll throw on a little bit more music and uh, we'll catch you here in just a few minutes. Rank that's lower than I know I should be. And all the team second, make sure I can't escape now. All I do is queue up just to lose that LP. My own minions don't want to cooperate. I, I, I've been trying to make that climb, but this chance broken. That chance broken. Cause I'm stuck in low E Welcome back, everyone. We're jumping now into a game two, um, and uh, with that aspect, uh, Miner, what are you kind of looking at of this, uh, you know, draft here? Bronze five age, 
is, I mean, do you just, do you, I mean, Nar, I know, is a contested pick between both the top laners. I expected that. Lee Sin's a contested pick between both the junglers. Do you get rid of the Shaco that adds that, sometimes that variable, there it yep. is, <laughs> that variable that uh, can, can throw things off? <laughs> I was about to say, and there's the Kled band, so, uh, what else are you looking for coming out of this? Shin band. Oh, Orianna band. Now, Some respect going yeah. on with the mid lane. Now, Shadow may just not be comfortable playing against Orianna, uh, in that aspect. Now, last time they banned Azir, which is the Prophet's most played mid laner, the Yasuo ban. Looks like all three of the bans from uh, Team Atlas are against the you know the top ranked person, Ward Turtle, in the top lane. And Twitch is uh, Alston Restips. I really Res like tips. that Twitch as a first pick. He was a little bit aggressive positioning in some of the team fights, but in others he did get a lot of damage off. And without the Shaco Oriana combination to assassinate him, I think that he'll get even more damage off this game. Now, Team Alice is going to go right back to that Lucian Lulu bot lane, which I think is probably one of the top two or three strongest bot lane combos you can have at the moment. Lulu is definitely one of the stronger supports out there. And we'll see if Psycho Pez wants to go back to Alistar, but I think he needs something a little bit more apparent in lane, or a little bit more interactive uh especially early because while uh the twitch was able to get up a little bit in cs they did die a few times in and that's a nocturne that might be a proxy pick that might that's true it may be a proxy pick i will double check my uh the room here just in case i do not see any comments about it being a proxy pick so far and I don't show any games on. Uh, I feel like that's a proxy pick because picking Nocturne into is you're going to have a really bad day. Well, Nocturne is interesting. That ability to turn out the lights can be extremely powerful. As the Prophet now is going to take the Syndra away from Shadow... Instead of trying to go for the counter pick, so he must not be comfortable against Syndra unless it was on that Oriana. Mm, I don't know about the Syndra. Now that's well, we'll see if he can. That, maybe he just had a bad game. The and this is the redemption game. Yeah, we will find out. As uh, well, Shadow played Syndra last game. Oh well, I'm sorry. Yeah, Syndra. The teams mixed up. Yeah, yeah. Team Atlas is now on the red side or the right side, and so the Prophet's taking it away from Shadow, so Shadow can't take it. So I wonder if the Prophet is only comfortable playing, or is you know thinks that his best champion into the Syndra was Oriana, and now with that aspect showing, we now have really oh. a Fizz player. Uh, is that going to be a Fizz top, top lane? It's top lane Fizz. Oh. Now, they, I like how they're like, we're going to make Fizz more uh, scaling in AP. Nope, never mind. Oh, back to Fiora. Oof. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, c certain people in this uh, caster's desk are not a fan of Fizz champions. Well, Fizz is a great champion. I'm not a fan of invulnerability frames in general. Fizz is a great champion. Not in my game. <laughs> is, uh, he is ex the, pull tr the troll pole is ridiculous. Okay, so a little bit more... They have a more interactive, aggressive jungler in Nocturne than the Ivern. Ivern likes to be aggressive, but is annoying aggressive right lands a snare gets some shields and that type of thing nocturne well, i don't know i would say that ivern's more interactive pre pre six because he'll he'll throw down a few ganks pre six nocturne not going to throw down very many ganks yes uh hecarim can power farm faster and can at least show up to interact with the lanes not the best ganker out there but definitely more interactive than nocturne pre six uh, I mean, Nocturne can gank. 
Um, he has a potential gank top lane and mid, really, mm -hmm. um, if the Shin goes aggressive, which he hasn't been. But he does have some setup with the Vel'Koz knockup, and the Syndra does not have any disengage for him if he lands his spell shield correctly. That's sure he has the spell shield, the knock back, not the ball coming in. Kind of an Correct. interesting aspect. Now, the bot lane, uh, we saw go in the favor of the Lucian Lulu last time, but how much was that Shaco getting first blood and then Twitch being uh, burning sums and another gank, and then, you know, Alistar didn't like have any sums. Alistar like and Twitch that. don't have Psalms, Lucian Lulu did, and we're able to all in and get another kill. And while the Twitch was able to, you know, be up like one or two CS, you know, fell behind because of all that pressure, and they died uh, a couple of times there. I don't know if they're going to have that same impact, and maybe it's a smoother lane now for uh, Alston and uh, Psychopaths. No, the Ez is real was very aggressive on the Lucian last game and they were getting good damage out even without the Shaco. And uh, I would expect the Twitch to be down in CS coming out of laning phase. But after saying that, you have to realize that Lucian in teamfights is just not as useful unless he's way ahead. So having the Twitch be down 15, 20, maybe even 30 CS at the end of laning phase is not going to be the end of the world because he'll be approximately as effective in team fights. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with the last game was while the Twitch was uh, up in CS at the laning lane phase, he was down almost two levels in experience mm -hmm. and had died. And because the towers and Dragon and Rift Herald, Lucian was up almost a full completed item on him uh, all the time after laning yes. phase. Extraneous factors in that. Uh, talk about Velkaz versus Syndra here in the last 30 seconds. Ooh. Well, Velkaz out everything Velkaz, Velkaz has outranges Syndra. If Syndra dodges Velkaz's abilities, she can close into her range and really harass the Velkaz, who does not have any mobility and a very telegraphed disengage with that knockup. So it is really going to be a, uh, it's a skill matchup. It's not so simple as, oh, Syndra is good against Oriana, which, by the way, Syndra is really good against Oriana, but because of the skill of the Oriana player, the Oriana won the lane. Um, the same thing can happen in this lane. Either person can outskill the other person regardless of the champion. Mm -hmm. So we run down the uh, lineups here for game two on the side of uh, Bronze 5 Age. In top lane, we have War Turtle on Fiora again. Butter Freelo is running uh, Nocturne. Shadow 2097 on mid lane Velkaz. Alston Res Tip on Twitch AD Carry. And Psychopez on Alstar Support. Wait, are you sure it's Velkaz mid? I don't think it is. I think it's definitely not Velkaz. Oh, definitely not Velkaz mid. Okay. Thank you, Miner, for the uh, for the correction. I want to make sure I get that uh, corrected for our viewers. As we see, uh, Team Atlas is going with Evie is Bay up top again on Shen, a droid killer on the Hecarim. Uh Syndra is being played by the Prophet in mid lane. Ez is real on AD Carry Lucian and uh, Melixra back on Twitch. Twitch, geez, sorry, Lulu support. As we see another possible gank squad invade coming out. Both teams like to really hover this uh, this bush here. Miner, we have hey, fire! We have fire! I'm fine. Okay, this is, I got this, that from the Discord. Yeah, the uh, the spectator delay is uh, is great uh, when first jumping into a, a match. it's uh, It takes it a minute for the X split to uh, wreck game capture. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. It's always been as... Uh, Good battle lines. Um, we've got... Both teams basically know where the other team is. Um, not being greedy 
last game they were uh, maybe not greedy, but a little bit dangerous staying in the pixel bush. Neither team is doing that. They're just setting up their jungles for success, which with farming jungles, it's a good idea. Now, just want to say that uh, the, the Hecarim, Lulu, and Lucian all walked over that ward that d died in the river just now. So they were all seen there. Uh, Syndra made it to mid lane safely, I guess, if you want to say safely, staring at uh, whatever that thing is supposed to be in mid lane. Bob? Bob? Yeah, okay. Bob. So he's got his coffee cup. Oh, jeez. He does have a coffee cup. Are those cufflinks? Yeah. Oh, jeez. In the mid lane. Oh, his cufflinks are terrible. Uh, <laughs> so we look at some poke damage, and this is the Lulu Lucian level 1 that absolutely crushed last game, taking Alistar to less than half health, already level 1 again. Yeah, I mean, they're just gonna have to weather that lane, but having a super tank, probably one of only the three viable super tanks from bot lane in the Alistar is just really handy, no matter what your team comp is. Yeah, and the, uh, the heal. So, just a lot more ward poking and damage being laid down across the uh, lanes here. I expect a less action packed than uh, the first game where we had Shen trying to do uh, jungle invades and crazy ganks, you know, pre uh, five minutes. I don't know if the junglers will even show up in a lane unless they run into each other until, what, second buff rotation? Yeah, neither one of these guys, like... They're fighting yeah, over a scuttle crab. Both of them require crab. a lot of setup to put it that way. And Hecarim's they going to but... go in with the smite, steal it away from the Whoa, Nocturne, fight, and the fear's going to go in onto the Hecarim, and they're going to fight each other, and Flash has come out, and, and Nocturne's going to get first blood, 1v1. He did lose out on scuttle crab, but now he reset both of his buffs, and going back to clear... Nocturne's winning already. Hey, and shout out to Shadow in the mid lane. He rotated to save his jungle. If his jungle was going to that fight or if the fight was going to go... Oh, teleport Oh, do by. not see as the Lucian's going to go in and does get on the Twitch. Alistar with the Headbutt Pulverize is going to finish both off as Fiora teleports in. And the heal from Lucian is going to save the Lulu as Fiora has to... Dash out, stays alive. Lucian's going to go in here. He does not have flash or heal to continue this. Alistar laying down the tr rampage, trample, ground stomp. I don't know what it's called anymore. Uh, you know, prevents any further engage. So, Lucian, that aggressive play style that you talked about in the pregame, definitely shows up here in in favor of this bot lane. And with Lucian getting the next kill up CS, makes the Fiora teleport and allows Shen to have a really easy lane, gets to hit level 5, gets a free back, hasn't used the potion, and is at the same CS as Fiora and didn't have to burn teleport. Shen is like dancing in his boots right now. Yeah, in a, mid, in a top laner when your enemy blows a teleport and gets nothing... And you can back without using teleport, so you've got that teleport advantage. You're basically handed a free six minutes, would you say? Because you can trade however you want against your enemy laner, and oh, I lost three trades in a row. Guess I'll teleport back at full health. And the, and the best part is, Shen is going to hit 6 with his teleport up, which is what all Shens want, because now they can really influence a bot lane fight to go in their favor or jungle skirmish again if they want to uh you know duke it out over scuttle crabs and with with those aspects shen and this is fives so when nocturne throws the ult out here in a little bit shen will be able to ult to a teammate if he knows how to do it properly and you know use the ult find his teammate through the darkness and i think if last game is any indication eevee is bay does know how to use the shimmel properly. Yeah, and I'd like to see that Eevee's Bay is not, uh, you know, different as Syndra's going to go for the ult and the uh, barrier is going to help. Flash comes out from the Syndra oh, under tower. She's going to take down. Missed. Shadow barely living. Uh -oh. 
Profit. Oh, uh -oh. no. Hacker, I'm with the drive-by. The drive-by. No. Oh, do it. Oh, he could have done the drive-by. He chose not to do the drive-by. Nocturne was actually seen by that ward in the river. That Vilkaz is so greedy. Get back there. Come yeah. Back to your other crit. There you go. He was. I was wondering if he was going to try and s save his flash to do a flash play, and that's it. Hey. Uh, Eevee's I'm Bay dropped to Pink Ward next to his tower because I think he uh, misclicked. Oh no, his Pink Ward was being cleared out by Nocturne, so he dropped his second Pink Ward to prevent it from going down. Uh, mm, that's sure a. That's, th worth it. that's uh, just let the other person get the thirty gold, bud. Yeah, it's. I know it sucks your Pink Ward goes down, but you had a second one and prepared, so. Uh, Hecarim use the the plant there, the Solfiora. Take, fight the uh, Scuttle Crab in bot lane here. So the mid laners have uh, been duking it out already, as uh, Velkaz just was out of mana. I think if Velkaz would have at least turned the ult on, would have killed Cinder because the Prophet flashed under tower and got hit like three times. Yeah, was... and also if the knockup would have hit. Um, the Syndra would have died. Mm -hmm. But good play by the Syndra. Oh, we got some bot lane action. Ah, just some poke. Maybe. Yeah. Alistar goes in while Lulu wasn't there trying to get some harass in. But uh, the uh, X, you know, Twitch actually, uh, you know, it was basically Doran's blade behind because of that uh, early kill that Lucian has. And the fact that Twitch started uh, with the, uh, you know, the long sword and three pots. So. But hey, for Shadow. I think this is a good switch for him because even though he's down 7 CS, he's not down he's 25. Not giving up kills. Well, he's trading effectively mm -hmm. and he is uh, minor. Really holding his own a lot better. Lucian went balls to the wall, and the only reason why he hasn't got a kill is because all sums were burnt down in bot lane on uh, the defensive side. Shen ult's going to prevent Sh Lucian going down, and Fiora is going to cancel teleport. Heal was burnt by Lucian as well, flash and exhaust by Lulu. Uh, the super aggressive play style, and now Shen can back. And actually, his lane was really pushed up, so he can actually probably walk back the lane here. Uh, he's... You know, down, you know, about 30 CS, but using your ult right on time saves your AD carry. Great job. And he's got 8 CS stored up in top lane right now, mm -hmm. and he's going to get almost all of them by the time he gets back. Fiora cannot... Yep, oh, and Fiora, maybe? Fiora, by the way, canceled her teleport to go down to bot lane for the fight. So, Shen now also has the teleport advantage and could teleport down here for this dragon fight if they want to go for it. As it does look like Bronze 5H has started the dragon. This is the fire drake. Syndra is going to be coming down uh, from the side here as dragon gets to about half health. Alistar is at about a quarter health. Hecarim looks to go in here. Ult in onto Alistar. He dies too super fast as Hecarim's going to steal away the dragon. And one, two flashes going out as Velkaz is going to go down with the, to Syndra with the help of Lulu. And Shen teleported in uh, to do nothing. But he, he, you know, showed his face. Moral support. Moral support. Uh, teleport takes too long now. Give him no. back. Give him back no. half a second. It, it doesn't take long <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, he's going to just run it back up to top lane, catch that uh, wave there, and, uh, and deal with the fact that uh, his team just got three kills and uh, dragon, red dragon, fire dragon. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Team Atlas is now lit. They are on fire. Yeah. Do, do, they have any, do they have any girl players on their team so I can use Katie Pri you know that girl's on fire no nothing I don't anyone know. and that's definitely not Katie Perry I don't know who it is when. I'm not into popular music uh, I forgot who it is I don't know someone tell chat tell me how Who's great my chat? singing was as we're as we're bantering while people are CSing nice blast plant into the pit as are we gonna have two fire dragons Oh, oh man. yeah. I that love the fire dragons. Beyonce, thank you. As you can tell, uh, we are totally involved with the, the music scene. Uh, that is 
popular. I, I think we just lost four people, minor, because of my singing. So it's Alicia uh, Keys. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks Twitch chat, Kappa. Yeah, well, it d whatever whatever works. Um, back to the farming here. Other than the one dragon and bot lane being aggressive, each lane has been aggressive once, except for top where War Turtles trying to push time push in onto uh, Evie's Bay, who's just doing his best to just stay sustained up and not die. And, I mean, he's doing a great job of it. Both games, even though he's given up CS leads, he has not uh, not given up the kills. And the junglers have been farming. Uh, you know, Nocturne got the better of Hecarim uh, for first blood, but Hecarim got the better of Nocturne for the dragon steal. And this Lucian Lulu bot lane, as the calling comes out, is Alistar has to eat the whole thing to protect uh, Twitch from going down. Has, has been really in favor of Moextra and uh, as is real has been uh, done an excellent job this game of keeping their pressure up getting the kills and just you know laying down the harass yeah the twitch is not playing bad he's going for decent trades but then he'll step up just once when he shouldn't and Ezreal will use that opportunity to dash in on him. Mm -hmm. Here comes the teleport and the nocturne ult and they're going to jump in onto Lulu who tries to flash out with the Shen and Lulu ult as we're going to see a double ult here and there's Taunt under tower and W from Shen is going to maybe keep Lulu alive but she walked too far away as Psychopath no, takes down no. Ezreal he Twitch. Was doing so good and then he turned he tanked turret for three shots. Oh, they oh no. Hecarim's going to come in here with the ghost and possibly the ult here gets the in, in and with the help of Lucian is going to come in extra damage. Ult in by Fiora onto the Hecarim. We'll get, get the shielding proc off. Just not get the healing off, but kills him because he took fear damage into tower and down goes the pony. Syndra's in mid lane just auto attacking hey, the tower. Great coordination by Bronze 5 Age. Call that in advance where you got the ult and the teleport coming in right after the ult so they can't tell where that teleport is. Great job. Little bit of mis-execution, but still they came out on top in that. Yeah, and Lulu almost escaped. I think if she would have stuck under on Shen's W, prevented that last auto attack in by Fiora, would maybe be able to either shield or, uh, you know, whimsy, uh, out uh to you know but you know tiny mechanicals both teams actually did a fairly good job considering uh whatever which each team was uh playing with there with that gank turnaround we now we, you know basically we're just looking at the cs differential is where the the gold swings are and at 15 can, minutes this game is a lot closer than last one can shin whenever uh whenever you're nocturne ulted can shin see the portrait side I'm trying to remember if you health, can. Health? I don't think he you can. can. You, so I think you, that was just in comms. Yeah, that's the thing. Is in comms, so you can't uh, you can't see the mini, mini icons or anything like that. But uh, you can definitely. Uh, so excellent click down there. communication yeah. by Team Atlas to tell the shit. Oh, shadow who to ult. flashes, and there's a flash in return by the Prophet with the ult takes down Shadow. Uh, great. You know, double flash. One flash got him, you know, just far enough away so that Prophet had to flash under tower again uh, to, uh, you know, ult uh, the sh shadow. Syndra had to flash under tower for one more damage to ult to uh, take the Valkaz down. So, you know, slightly yeah, winning out in that. Uh, in this series, the Prophet is playing just a little bit better than Shadow, but he has significantly ramped his gameplay up from last game. He's only died once in lane. He's within 15 CS, as opposed to last game, where he, he was just having a bad game and maybe on an uncomfortable champion. He's on a much better champion, and he's pretty well going even like slightly down but mostly even so i'm giving him a good job good recovery from what could have been a tilting game last game mm -hmm. hecarim has decided to finish him smite him before he gets into the trinity force as we see the next dragon has spawned shannon ult is up and so is his teleport 
Whereas Fiora is going to be down just now for just a little bit. But uh oh, I we've got a drive by in mid. Nope, just some more. I th along. I think the Hecarim really wants to get set up for this dragon as the headbutt knocks the pony into the bush. Um, and sh Eevee's base is like, I'm just going to sit under tower until my bot lane can push up. That bottom tier tower is nearly dead. That mid tier tower is nearly dead. Um, Alexa's done an excellent job the last few minutes of keeping this river warded and clearing out the enemy vision. And with the next dragon here, both the junglers are on the top side of the map getting buffs, uh, which allows Lucian to, you know, get the first brick gold in the favor of his team. And Syndra is really close at taking down that mid-tier uh, one as well. And with those tier ones down, it's kind of looking like last game, but the gold is a lot closer. We're not looking at four, five, six k. We're looking much closer at, uh, you know, just yeah, with one this to two. Minuscule amount of gold lead. It's whoever is backed most recently has the advantage. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the team with the gold advantage having an advantage. Now, both teams are pinging Rift and Dragon as uh, as, as we kind of look here. Hecarim's on the top half of the map. Syndra is able to finish off that tower. If she can get into back right now is risky as, uh, you know, she backs to spend that money that she just got. She That advantage that they have kind of right now could go down. Now, one thing that she went for the finished Murakon gives her more mana, but less damage than if she would have gotten last chapter t1 boots and a blast or not blasting one uh needlessly large mm -hmm. so good for sustained fights not as good for the heavy burst well it also is going to have the morello passive to go against the healing that nocturne has twitch has alistar gives uh, fiora at this point has the game they don't have a ton like they do have some they have some, and sometimes it's just a little bit here as we see the Twitch backed off. And with Twitch backing and Fiora backing as well, now Fiora's teleport did just come back up. So we may be looking at a huge team fight here, but there's a pink in the board as we may see Nocturne want to go for this. Nope. That's a pretty much I think clean that dragon. They wisely gave that dragon up. That would have been a 3v4 mm -hmm. without their AD carry. You know, Fiora would have had the teleport in, and yeah. while they did have decent teleport wards, Shen has teleport and ult as well, so definitely was going to counter that, and and just the better positioning over time of you know Malexor being Looks able like to get, get a top turret. No, Shen no. teleport. I was saying the Lulu had done a pretty good job of keeping this the the river area warded or at least counter warded, and Vision taken down. I spent a lot of time in there recently. And I think just all that extra pressure and unknown allowed them to go for that trade. Or by trade, I mean just Ooh, take top Dragon. Lane. They're pinging for it. I think Eevee's base just baiting Fiora down here, just trying to get into the Lulu range. And there's the uh, the Whimsy that come down. Lucian's not going to be in range to fight this. Uh, as there's the exhaust comes out from Lulu. Hecarim's here as well. Fiora's going to try and it will parries Ooh, the Nocturne ult. Absolutely great. Lulu with the poke, not enough. Fiora does not finish off the uh, Shen or proc, the ult passive. Is she's going to have to back here. Nocturne ult uh, was used basically as, as a distraction. Now we have Alistar and Twitch down in bot lane as Lucian and Velka Lucian's up here to go up against this uh, Velka's Nocturne, finish off this tower. But that's not going to be enough. And the extra damage is going to be countered by the teleport by Fiora. But Twitch down here does trade the bottom tier one. So the trade's going to definitely go in favor of uh, Bronze 5 Age for the moment. Hey, great heads up play by Lucian, or not Lucian, by Nocturne. He knew he wasn't in ult range. The enemy team didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, good use of a zoning ult to save the Fiora and allow their bot lane to trade a turret for a Nocturne ult. And in fl fl uh, not flash, sorry, teleport is uh, you know War Turtle is able to escape without burning flash, which is a great aspect. Now, uh, Rift Herald, no one got the Rift Herald in this game as this game was a much slower pace with the farming junglers uh, than the uh, than the last one. And now uh, Lucian is in a very different spot, uh, going one on one versus the top laner than he was in last hey, game. Guess what, Dragon is next. 
Or do we really triple have triple fire? Triple fire. Oh man, I don't like triples. Now, I don't think the bronze <laughs> five age can afford to give up a third fire drake. That is insane. That would be a twenty four percent increase in attack damage and AP. Whereas if it's one to one, it drops back down to just a twelve percent difference. Yeah, overall. And that that's going to be ex or, sorry eight percent eight percent yeah the the twelve eight percent difference. difference yes so the, as you just mentioned that's going to be s super impactful I mean each team wants this fire Drake and they may be just setting up for it as is their next setup as the bot laners are in top lane because that's where the outer towers are Syndra's still just fighting Velkos in mid over you know CS Nocturne. Trying to get his own jungle, but Hecarim's been doing a little bit of counter jungling here recently. Shin's getting a good split on down there. He is, as Fiora got stuck between top lane with the bot lane in it and nothing to do in this river area and is now backing. So, uh, maybe going to try and get a game, uh, you know, get in on the Hecarim, but Hecarim has Ghost and Ult and can escape. Syntra still has Flash and Barrier, can't really, you know, jump in on that. Uh, I mean, it's a nice ward. But Nocturne's the one splitting right now. Now, Nocturne has ult, whereas... There's the blast oh, going... Oh! Or didn't make it over the wall. And not Velka's ult was used up top, and it looked like it didn't very much, as Fiora is going to get jammed, and there is the headbutt by uh, Alistar trying to get out of here, as Syndra misses the Q to E combo. Nothing really that going for him there. Shen was looks like maybe he was going to run top, maybe not, as we have five people up here just trying to play some wards. Get vision, understand control. If bronze 5 Age is at a severe disadvantage without three crucial ults if they choose to fight right here. I hope that they choose to slow play it and not look for anything too crazy. And the calling clears the wave, so they don't have anything to really push with. Hecarim's going to go mid here as we roll on it down, scroll down here, as he's going to ult in just to, I think, try and get the fear off. That did not happen, as Alistar did a headbutt uh, pulverize up in that top bush, it looked like. Twitch is running up that way with Hecarim burning ghost and ult. We're going to swap it back to top here. Wrong AD carry I clicked on, and... Uh, Nothing happens, but all five members of Bronze 5 Age are up here against Team Atlas. Psychopaz keeps looking to go in for these engages and just hasn't been quite coordinated enough as Hecarim's going to push in on mid. Shen is just casually strolling it down bot lane. And I say yeah, casually I mean, because he only has Nami Cinder and auto attacks right now to push that wave, and it's kind of slow. Once again, <laughs> went for that really early Warmogs and... Uh, Maybe this is just one of his builds that he likes, and he knows the item breaking points. Um, I think that maybe an earlier wave clear item might be more beneficial. Maybe in the future he can look into that, or maybe he just really wants those extra sustain that the components build in from that war box. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to be an interesting fight as we see Twitch and Shen on the or jungle. As Hecarim is going to be able to get that down before Fiora comes in to kill him. As there's the Shen ult with the Blast Cone. Hecarim's going to be able to get away. And Shen's just going to run Bodyguard here as Lucian's walk down from the base. And they're going to go in onto Fiora who flashes away. Double flash out. Uh, actually, she's lived safe. Cullen comes out, deals most of the damage to the Scuttle Crab I've ever seen, and uh, Twitch runs up in the dr jungle with visible place a ward. Mm. Notice that sure Culling that. damage absolutely shredded the Scuttle Crab in the Shen. Fifteen auto attacks plus Sunfire Cape couldn't kill it. As now, we see, Fiora. Great job keeping an eye on the... Oh, another fight mid. Yeah, sorry. Fiora teleported to the top. Gonna get in onto the Syndra with the help of the Nocturne ult as Shen and Lulu are running defense here mid lane. And that Velkaz true oh, damage absolutely nearly killing uh, Shen 
Lulu ult had to be used on the Shen to keep him alive. Lucian tries to come in from behind and get absolutely stunned. Shen taunting in onto the Twitch, who takes one, almost two tower shots as he is able to just crawl out of there as Hecarim is now chasing in onto the Nocturne here in the jungle. He's going to get away because of that fear. Hecarim with the ult, not enough range. Velkos now la lands the Q with the slow and the knockout. Knock Fiora up. dashes in, stabs the pony, and quick trades back and forth for uh you know team atlas now while well, they're ahead with three oh, additional fire drakes they did just kill the jungler and the mid laner they have the alistar to tank and just damage 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 shen they ulting got... to top lane so they know it's coming so that he can run down there now uh i believe you pulled the camera back to mid before the uh Top kill came down. Yeah, great, sorry. <laughs> great spell shield by Nocturne. Spell shielding the knock away that would have saved the Syndra. So, hair trigger on that, and that was what secured the kill in top lane. Nice. And in mid lane, Lulu uh, had to burn ult and shield to save Shen's life because that Velkaz was absolutely ripping through. And the only reason why uh, they didn't take the tower is because Shen was able to come back in and taunt uh, Twitch under tower. And Twitch took a couple of tower shots. Uh, we got some so, things going on top lane. Uh, Ward Turtle getting a massive gank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's the exhaust as well. I don't think you're going to survive this. Does Ooh, parry the... Oh, my oh goodness. jeez. And... It's going to be able to dash away. Holy oh. crap. Prevented Amazing the Sintra Balls from door. absolutely crushing them. Now, interesting. Oh, Hecarim caught trying to assassinate Velkaz in the jungle as the Shen's going to come in and try and with the ult. Does not land the, uh, the taunt there. Does keep the Hecarim alive. All while Lucian is split pushing in bot lane. We have a weird split push action going on with the 80 carry down there but he does have a blade of the rune king and he second itemed that ga i've seen a lot of ad carries going for this now especially against a heavy ad comp that uh bronze five age is running oh we've got some action she's catch him no blade of the rune king active no. plus she dashes over the wall hooray <laughs> it, it wasn't even close actually <laughs> but I'm really liking uh, Alston Reztip on Twitch his Twitch has improved this game probably because he doesn't have three people who can just murder him at the touch of a button yeah he doesn't um, he's, he's not dying to like one he's not being one shot by the mid laner or but the jungler his positioning has definitely improved and like you saw in that last fight when his teammate was close to getting picked off he opens up with the ult forces the enemy team back he disengages himself before he dies great job now the true damage that's being hit in onto the shen has been pretty pretty strong as Velkaz has actually been able to you know shred through the tank somewhat uh Velkaz well, zero MR as well yeah and he's not getting any MR anytime soon he's going for the repeat build it literally is just like the exact same thing he ran last game for his build uh and that aspect and Fiora is doing the same but Fiora is once again up kills oh a assists. mountain drake man team atlas already has three fire drakes I said it on the last dragon, but Bronze Five H can't let them get a mount. Yeah, that would they would be... burn through Baron so fast. They 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 already burn through Baron extremely quickly. As nice headbutt from Alistar stops the Cinder from laying down any more poke. As we are 20 seconds from the dragon now, Lulu as 
been transitioning, tried to transition her wards to the top half of the map, but they had recently just gone down as, uh, you know, they can only stay up on the map for so long. Lucian going to try and dash in. Actually, has to flash out so he doesn't get feared and lays the entire calling down on Twitch, who just kept running the same direction as Lucian, eats the entire thing, has to burn heal. So AD carries training summoners, uh in the in the bot lane but that's going to send twitch back to base and with twitch back to base lucian he got the uh you know the little heal fruit and this it looks like this is going to be their fourth dragon eighth of the match as fiora goes in onto shen in top lane who uh flashed over the walls fiora is chasing uh him down so he's trying to you know get back to tower so he can ult into range if needed the rest of the team just kind of playing pokes and mid with the even though bronze five age is down all of those dragons and three I towers actually kind of analyzing it further oh there's not a whole lot of people that are benefiting as much from that raw damage they don't have an assassin on team atlas oh Engage. Well, Hecarim did his best job right there, just absolutely obliterating the Velkaz. Shen ult comes in too late to save his life as Hecarim got greedy. His entire team had backed. No one was there at all to lay any support. He did kill the mid laner, but his life got traded for it. I mean, Velkaz is, you know, was 0-2 at the time and behind his mid laner in CS by 50. I mean... Definitely not, you know, the pr most feared person on the enemy team at the moment. I don't think that was worth the trade. Especially because the mm -hmm. Shen ult went down. Maybe. I don't know. It was an aggressive play, and it didn't pan out. Like, he, he made it with too little information. The play, had he had better wordage could have turned out but you're right it was a poor trade because of the lack of information but I applaud them for being proactive and aggressive just a little too aggressive given the level of information that they had and he got punished for it mm -hmm. his it's different than he got punished for it. this fact that Shen also get punished for it because the Shen ult went down and then now Shen has to play more cautiously on the top half of the map or be in a position to you know get down teleport where you know we're playing the vision clear game now uh, in lane and Alistar just goes in for some poke damage on the Lulu but I mean once again we're clearing out wards we're trying to lay down some vision themselves each team's has been dancing uh, in and out of uh, Barons here as Twitch and Nocturne may open up again onto the Hecarim. His ult is back up so he can ult out if needed, but he's just going to be able to run away with his E. But as I was saying, for the Fire Drake, really only Syndra is building raw damage. Right now, Lucian has a Bork and then some damage, but he's got more armor pin, and, and Lulu's not building damage. Fire Drakes are going to help Shin a little bit, but he does more percentage damage, not necessarily raw damage. And Hecarim does, like that definitely helps with Sheen, but it's not like he's an assassin where he's building raw damage that is multiplied by those dragons. So good for that team, but it's not as catastrophic as if Lucian was going full crit and they had an assassin jungle. Mm -hmm. And Velkaz is still laying out the damage when uh, he does land his abilities, even though he is down currently uh, in CS and level. And the longer this game goes, the more impactful one mistake can be. We saw the last game how far ahead, uh, you know, oh my gosh, a droid killer is going to ult in on here and with the E and makes Fjord burn teleport and Hecarim uh uh, is with his ult, oh, Nocturne ult as well, as Lulu fight. burns the ult in here on the Hecarim, as Lulu and Lucian are dashing over the wall, and Shen with a taunt, oh well, but there's a three-man Velkaz ult who's going to get turned by the side by Syndra, is going to absolutely explode her, Perry comes out from Fiora, as she's going to be able to get one or two stuns, Alistar trying to lay down some peel for the carries here, and now Lucian is jumping in onto the top half of the map, as Nocturne picked up a kill on the other tank, so we have three versus two here with Nocturne playing, the safety scan gets the fear off on to Lucian, but Lulu with 
the combination of the double up pass, double up, double shot, double double hit. I don't know, d light slinger. Name Blushin. Yeah, light slinger. P light slinger uh, takes him out with the jungler and the tank down. I don't think they can do much now, for this, other than that just fight put some wards exactly down. Exactly how you have to play. Syndra came in with the flank, turned what would have been a disastrous fight if she would have been in the back. Not able to hold anyone but a tank takes out both the Twitch and the Velkaz who are laying down massive AoE damage in that choke and turns that fight right around. As War Turtles just gonna flash in onto Lulu under tower, get the kill there. Liz looks like gonna go this does another great job of countering the Cinder ult, tanks the tower damage as well. 6 0 and 4 on this Fiora absolutely runs amok in these little skirmishes can they turn yep. that into any objectives though that has been the problem as you know team atlas while they've been losing some fights here and there whenever they win it they get objectives or they definitely take twitch. control of the wish shot oh which is invisible oh yeah oh, yeah but lucian goes for the flash in and hecarim ults in on there as shen places the w blocks most of that damage from twitch and is able to get out as shen takes down the velkas fiora is uh been taken out nocturne burns the ult takes down the ga on the lucian here as hecarim's trying to get in onto uh one of those carries takes out the other jungler shen maybe coming in from the backside lucian with the double up Alistar comes oh, in, no, flash taunt by Evie and Spake. nice job with the shield, prevents any more oh. auto attacks coming in from Twitch, there's one more done, Ace coming out on the side of Team Atlas, and they take kills straight into the objective. If they get this dragon, that's going to be catastrophic. That super Four burn damage dragon, that's going to be coming out. Dragon. Oh, jeez. Oh, and they I have... I was hoping that if the Twitch was just a small amount further back, Alistar could have maybe CC'd a little more, but great job by the Shin, knowing the exact taunt range that he could hit, getting the Twitch with that taunt, and finishing them off. Are they going to back? I don't know. They may be able to run straight at Baron. Uh, I would probably... Lucian which... doesn't have mana. Yeah, good, good yeah, call to back. Lucian please. may back. Hecarim's coming up. You want to fight right now with this dragon. Uh, Miner, that's... Uh, they're doubling that 24% damage, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because of yes. the uh, Elder. Yeah, that's a lot of extra damage coming out from even Lulu at this point. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Even Lulu... With the true damage and the double base damage, mm -hmm. by 40%, you're pretty much close enough to 50% increase. Come on. That's ridiculous. Shen's going to back, probably uh, get on the uh, split pushes. Nocturne, if Nocturne is seen in bot lane, I, they're gonna, they should go right on it. Right now, just do Baron. Nocturne is in the bottom lane. They're playing with fire by sending their jungler here. I know he has a long range engage. As Hecarim says, nope, I'm going straight in on this Fiora. Uh, there's the Cullen coming out, and they're just, they're kind of, just kind of wasting it here. They're clearing out the wards. They do get mid lane tier 2 with the minions, as the enemy team is scared to go in here with Hecarim at half health. Some poke damage over the wall. Let's see, Lucian does not have mana. And Bronze 5, if they engage in a choke like this, they can win the team fight even against Elder Dragon. With all of that funnel damage from Belkaz and Twitch, that's why Team Atlas smartly is not pulling the trigger in those narrow jungle choke points. Mm -hmm. And how much time do these guys have left on Dragon? They can't be very much. No, they are running down really quickly here. Less uh, than a quarter left. They better do something, or they they get Great one tower right out of it and no kills. I don't think. You know, I mean, the good kills getting to take it were a great job, but sh they didn't. Ha they didn't as well as they played the last game, getting the dragons and Baron, and then you know Elder, and then winning. They've used this Elder Dragon a complete 180 from that. They've done nothing than clear, but clear wards with it. Now, I would disagree and say that Bronze Five Age, because they're not as far behind, was able to play this one better. Team Atlas was looking for that Baron. Bronze Five Age was saying, "No, we're going to contest you." And then, when 
Team Atlas. With oh, Hecarim's going to go in right as the game. Baron goes down. And there is the Nocturne ult. But Shen is here as he's going to go over to the uh, Blast Cone and take it into the Dragon Pit. But Nocturne with the Blade of the Rune King and the Titanic Hydra plus Fiora with the Titanic Hydra. Yeah, but the Baron, as we see, really late. Good job that they got the Baron eventually. And they're backing. And they were able to take that without their, uh, their jungler. But... These are the risk plays here that uh, not necessarily like clean like we saw in game one. Yeah, just as I was going to give Bronze Five Age props for stalling the Baron, retreating to the choke, and just repeating that over and over, then they give up the Baron. They do go for a pick, which is good, but it was a pick on the side of the map opposite Baron, which allowed Team Atlas to just go for the Baron. But who, what, would you expect a Lulu Syndra Lucian to really do Baron without the jungler or the or one, the tank there, either one of those people? A With a four, four dragon, elder dragon, yes. Yeah, I guess that is true at, at that aspect that they did have all those. Now, we are at 42 minutes here. It, we are now finally at a 5k gold lead, and it took this long for that to happen. Uh, while, while that's going on, Shen's now in top lane. But Shen's, you know, way further behind in items. Uh, he's a full item behind it, items behind this now, Fiora right now. Even though it's a 5k lead, they have... It doesn't matter. I want to say 10 to 15k gold lead worth of stats because of the dragons. The, yes, and the Baron currently with the help of minions. Now, Lucian's GA just did come back up, so that's going to be good for them because you're going to have to kill him twice. And if Lulu can keep him alive coming back out of his uh, s second res with the ult, Ooh, or he's just going to die right away. There's a redemption. See if the ult, he's going to flash out as well. There's the calling come out. Cinder's going to flash ult and kill the Velkos. So we're going to go big. And Nocturne's going to get oh, in onto Lulu. Lulu flash over the try and get onto Lucian. That's not going to be enough. As Shen is going to come in here and i don't know if nocturne knew that was coming hecarim's gonna come over from the side and take another kill as uh, uh teleport in from fiora on this backside hecarim also in onto the uh, velcots to take that one down lulu has to be careful going in onto this fiora as they're going to push in both 80 carries are dead but fiora does not have wave uh enough wave clear to deal with these champions right now this probably is one tower depending on how they want to dive it maybe even the inhibitor yeah, they've got the inhibitor off of this, and Bronze Five Age can't contest this or they lose the game. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Don't I'll, do it! It's just some poke damage and. No, it's not! No! Oh, if they would have committed to that. <laughs> well, Shen is like committing, and there he goes, and there's the taunt. Comes out the parry, he's not going to be enough. Lulu's the one taking damage. She's barely going to be able to escape. They do get one Nexus Tower, and they need to use this Baron and Recall fast before they get out. Twitch is now coming in behind them. Lulu made it out safely. As they're, they're not even going to back. As Hecarim's turning right around, trying to use that Triforce to get in onto this tower. They get more damage. They just need to, I think, to get out of here with their lives with that Baron help of recall. Shen's tanking towers, and he takes the damage, but goes down. And with the tank gone, they probably lose pressure in mid lane. I, I wonder how many towers they're going to lose for that. I don't know. They're not really committing to that they tower now. I thought they were Bronze going Five to. Age was playing with fire. Oh, oh. Zero towers. Okay, I didn't see what... I was watching the Hecarim try to get his split push on with the last tiny bit of uh, Baron that they have. Uh, and now he's going to go down to the Nocturne and Velkaz ult combo there. What? Did Twitch just step up too close and get comboed he by got Syndra? one inch too close and got... QE'd and instantly died because he has zero magic resist. Which, it's fine if you have zero magic resist, but you can't be next to the Syndra. That was just a little bit too close mispositioning. And I don't think he'll do that again this this game. Yeah, well, Syndra is at full build now, so we have reached max... Full build with three fire dragons. Yeah. He currently has 804 AP. That's absolutely brutal. Even if you're standing next to Alistar, who has Knight's Vow and Locket, you still get, like, two-shot. It's crazy ridiculous. Yeah, like, that's the next best thing to a Vigor R, is the QE. That's, with 800 AP, 
that's pumping out a boatload of damage. Mm -hmm. And if there's in, <laughs> and he's, he's down a level currently. He may have been down two levels then. As we looks like we're gonna have a five v five man. And Shen has gone for Thorn Mail next item. And no MR to deal with the, whatever Velkos is going to put up as Lucian's going to just take down the tower. Lays the culling off on really no one here. Shen's the one taking the uh, damage as he has to flash away. Alistar gets too close and stuck between uh, the champions. And Hecarim's going to ult in here and knock Fjord back into Lulu. And he has his own ult as Hecarim's going to go in. Nocturne blows the ult here. Is it going to be able to take down the Prophet? He's going to die for it in return. Redemption, I believe, was loosed by Lulu to try and keep the rest of her teammates alive here. And nope, there's the redemption. Hecarim's really getting ahead of Droid Killer. Goes on Fiora with the uh, ult. Not going to going to proc it as Shen counters with the ult of his own. And Lucian's going to dash in. And Alistar's going to... Uh, ah, sorry, Alistar. Lucian takes down Lu Velkaz and Twitch. Fiora is trying to do her final stand here on the tower with the uh, two uh, super minions attacking this in Nexus Nexus Tower. I don't I think this is going to be game in just yeah, a little bit more. Game. That's game as Team Atlas takes down Bronze 5H to win the Stellar Division. Congratulations! Yeah, that was a great to that second team game Atlas. was a great game by both teams. Um, team Atlas once again showing very coordinated play, but I really want to give a hand to the Bronze Five Age. They had a really rough game, game one. They came back. They kept it within five thousand gold, literally that whole game. They were throwing punch for punch, and in the end, Team Atlas's coordination and just slightly, ever so slightly better teamwork, slowly but surely ground out a win. There was never, oh, we win this fight just completely, and we get all of these objectives. It's, ah, oh, we're up one man because we barely won that fight. We can squeeze out this little bit of advantage, but they do squeeze it out, they don't overreach and efficiently close that game out. So we kind of look over the uh, the final stats here. It seemed to be that they just the slight advantages that uh, whenever uh, Team Atlas got kills, they were able to take objectives. And in this, you know, in this match between these two teams, they got what eight regular dragons and two elder dragons and they went one out of two baron or sorry th two out of three barons and when you get those objectives on the map that extra you know ap or movement speed or just straight you know extra little bit of damage whether it be the burn damage with elder or the damage with uh, the mountain drakes on those towers and the other make you know large monsters just seem to give them that little bit of oomph in in those aspects, which allowed them to be in better position and better control going up against the enemy team who are fighting without those disadvantages. Yep, and what really stuck out to me this game from Team Atlas was their team play. Their calls were, for the most part. Very well coordinated, good rotations, just a solid grind you out game. And you can tell why they are in the finals. Their team meshed very well, great team play, and uh, each one of the team members took their turn carrying at least one fight. I believe each member. Um, each member really uh, carried multiple fights, and each member took a turn being carried in one or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to try to swap over now and talk to someone from the winning team. And it doesn't let me... All right, are we going to get some guests on for a post-game interview? Yep. 
sending it now here. So uh, something we kind of like to do is talk to the, the team that's, uh, at least someone from the team that's winning, and, and trying to learn about their season. And as we just kind of look at the uh, the final stats and touch bits, the this was really a team, you know, a team aspect uh, across uh, both games here. And I, I particularly liked watching the different strategies, not only that uh, their team does, each team does, but and how uh, how well they uh, pulled it out, right? And they both showed aspects of really accomplishing their goals and taking them uh, to to the final point. And uh, it was really nice to see that uh, in this series from both those teams. And so I'm going to welcome our guest here. Uh, I believe we have Evie is Bay, the top laner. Uh, for Team Atlas, uh, congratulations on your victory. Yeah, thank you. Um, we also have the mid laner here too. Oh, um, I did not see it. And the Prophet is here as well. Welcome, guys. Hey. Yeah, great yeah, game for having, having us. us. So, uh, first, uh, we'll you know we'll start off with Evie's Bay up top. Tell us what was your experience during the season and into the playoffs, going into uh, tonight's match just in playing Advantage League, uh, just kind of in general, and, and how you enjoyed it and that type of stuff. Okay. So this is my first uh, season. I was brought in by Mellow Extra, and at first I thought it was a really cool, co cool concept, you know, playing with a team I've never played with one before. Um, as the season progressed, I think it became apparent that Vantage was actually helping me out with my gameplay. Um, so I think... At the end of the day, I just became a better player. And not only that, but the community advantage is so great that I've met so many people and that I could call friends now. So I think it's a great program, and I think what you guys are doing and what Vantage is doing is great. Profit, how do you feel? Oh, yeah, I mean, for my first season. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Steven handle it then. <laughs> His answer is pretty much the same as mine. Okay, so uh, coming into tonight's match, you guys were going up against uh, Bronze 5 Age, and you spent all of your bands in both games targeted at uh, Ward Turtle. Now, he, he is the uh, the highest ranking member in your league. Uh it, that's due to his own growth in the Vantage experience. Um, just sort of maybe touch upon uh, going up against this team and what your plan was to uh, fight them. Yeah. Um, so uh, going to get up against this team, this is one of the only two teams we've actually lost against, and we lost pretty hard. So um, our idea was just to basically isolate top and let the rest of the map do their thing. And then um, the reason why we banned his champs out is because I respect him as a player, you know. Um, I think he's a great player and they're a great team. But I feel like War Turtle is a cut above the rest, and we didn't want to let that destroy us. So the whole idea was keep, keep me top lane, keep me from not dying, and helping out with team fights more. Um, yeah. You had some clutch shinolds for sure, but I do have to ask, how does your shot calling work? Because your team just really meshed, really controlled objectives. I believe you only dropped one dragon this what? entire series. Like, one Baron. how does that work, and who is Baron. your shot caller? Yeah, they, they, the one smite stolen Baron compared to the two Barons they got and the nine dragons that they got yeah um well our support does our shot calling and i think he does a great job i think um what it really comes down to is how much we play outside of vantage to grow that synergy um and then jungle calls and everything our jungle usually handles it so we usually have one voice to do one thing and even if it's a bad call, we'll go for it. I think commitment is something that a lot of teams should strive to do. Um, and, yeah. Man, you guys were very committed. I don't think I, – I can't come up with or five plays. There were maybe one or two where 
you didn't completely commit, but one or two over a two-game series, that's amazing. There are teams in the upper division that can only hope to achieve that kind of synergy. So great job creating a system and committing to that system for your shot calling. I just wanted to throw that in there real quick because I was impressed watching these games. Thank you. It was and, uh, oh, go ahead, Amo. It was it, as kind of touch base. The uh, the team aspect is something that League of Legends and the pro scene has seen. Uh, you know, start to ex- uh, develop a whole lot. And I think this, the Vantage League you just kind of touched on is developing as well. Now I know a, a little bit about your guys' team, and I think uh, you said Melixra brought you guys uh, in. And if I'm not mistaken, he tries to set up, I think, the most scrims, I think, of any team I've seen in the Slack channel. Is that right? He's he's always out there looking for those. Yeah, because yeah. I think a, as a team, we feel like it's very important to grow the synergy, and not only that, but to get to know our opponents, because it's really daunting when you go against someone that you don't know. Um, and I think more people on Vantage should take advantage of the ladder match system. It just makes it like another tool that you can use to fix the problems before you ever get into game. All right, so each one of you, what is the most memorable moment that you have had in Vantage just from this season? Uh, let's see. Um, it would have to be against Bronze Five Age, actually, the first regular season game, like. Um, like I stated, we lost the first uh, game, and we were going into the second game with very low expectations, and we managed to play a really, really good game, but I also got to play my NAR, which is something that it was the first time I ever pulled it out, and just playing that and actually playing a carry for the first time, actually leading my team to victory made me feel as though I could be versatile, and I was very happy with my team and how they bounced back as well. Nice. How about you, Prophet? Is my mic any better before I start? Yes, there, it is yeah. excellent. All right, excellent. Well, I have to admit, my, my most memorable moment from Vantage was probably week five going up against the second-ranked team, uh, Ninny Muggins, I think, mm-hmm. however long that name is. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. and in the, the second game, I went Syndra, and I got two kills in lane and went off to have, like, 20 kills in that game. That wow. was one of my, like, favorite moments. The whole team was just like in check off, like you know. It felt like I had a crowd. I like I loved it. I mean, Android Killer always came, took care of my lane when I was in trouble. I could always count on just the team support and the calls, and we made it through. And it was a nice win over the the team that was nearest us. Nice. I'm glad that you guys both have some great memories from this season. Now, another question, probably an even more question. Are you guys coming back for next split? Yeah, I'll, I'll be coming back for next split, definitely. Uh, sadly, I won't be. I'll be just oh, subbing it up. Yeah, I'll be. I'll hey, pay the as fee long and as you're chill out. Around. <laughs> as long as you're sticking around. Yeah, it's okay though. I I have absolute confidence in the rest of my team to continue winning without me. I mean, the bot lane is absolutely solid. Uh, my hats off to both Melo and Easy. And, man, I love Mitch in the jungle. Always took care of it. And you can't even discount Steve in the top. It was really uh, great to watch you guys play uh, during the season and uh, develop as a team and uh, come out on top of victorious uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the finals here. I got uh, one kind of cheeky question, though. As is real, has yet to play as real, WTF. <laughs> I think he played it one game, right, Steven? Yeah, he played it one game, but the thing about our team is, like, um, all of our players have a very deep champion pool, and we try to put ourselves um, behind the team. So, like, if the team needs something, usually we'll be like, oh, you know, we know you want to play Ezreal, but uh, if you want to play this, and usually there's no issues. Uh, he did play it once, though, and, and he liked it a lot. So, yeah, it is his you, favorite champ. Yeah, maybe more to come next season because I know he's gonna come back. 
I definitely look forward to that. And I both want to thank uh, both uh, both of you for joining us for the little uh, post-match interview. And congratulations once again on being the champions of the Stellar Division. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. guys. Yeah, thank and, you for uh, yeah, definitely, and special shout out to uh, both of you because you guys do something advantage that puts that extra oomph to every single game. Like it feels like we're in LCS, even though we're not, but just makes us feel like these games are really important when someone's casting you. So I think I speak for every single person advantage in saying, you know, what you guys do is priceless, and thank you. Oh yeah, and it's a great tool for reviewing matches. Like your outside opinion is very valuable, especially to like me, a mid laner watching the gameplay. You guys see so much more that I miss. It's it's really a valuable tool. We appreciate it. Thank well, you, thank guys, you for, for the kind words. Okay, Miner. Uh, it's with bit, that I think we're signing uh, off, right? Oh, uh, pretty much, Miner. It's it's the last uh, the last I will be doing any casting uh, for the season. I've knocked out. Three division finals here. I'm Gelati is, I believe, setting up the last one. I hope Dude. to uh, catch it when I can, whenever it, uh, whenever that occurs in the in the chat. So, uh, are you've been a beast casting. And hey, if any other people in Vantage are interested in casting, you should just try it out. I'd never cast before. No had either. It's really not that hard. And uh, we can always use more casters, and it's a ton of fun. Yep, we're definitely uh, looking for uh, people. And the new season is uh, coming up here. Jeez, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Two weeks? It's two, I'm tr I, I was believe. trying to remember the exact date. Uh, check June the select. 10, June right? 10th, yes. So uh, look for June 10th. If you have your team, you can sign up. Our pre-sign-ups are now. You can go ahead and uh, sign up. Uh, give uh chase and vantage all of your monies even though you know 20 bucks or 20 bucks is you know not not too shabby uh if you can't make it for the full season as we heard the profits not gonna be able to make it coming up definitely try and sign up as just to keep your name in the uh, ring as a sub player uh oh new people are information always like, start date is the 12th the 12th okay 12th uh, definitely, you know, keep that around. Stick around. Uh, look for Gelati's information coming up about the Supernova division and when uh, those uh, streams uh, hopefully will be uh, coming out or the VODs there. VODs of this will be posted uh, later on tonight. Uh, afterwards, uh, trying to make sure I, you know, cross my T's and dot my I's here. Miner, do you want to say anything uh, before before we go? It was a great season. It was a great. It was hey, a lot of fun, season, man. Great season and. I'm excited to be back playing in Vantage for this next season, and every one of you guys. Yeah, it's uh, been a great uh, on my end as well. Whether it be casting or just running the uh, the stream uh, for everyone. Hopefully, you've all rather enjoyed my uh, at channels. I tried to make them cheesy as possible. Uh, you know, just liquidy, nachoy, delicious. Uh, and I think we're just we're just gonna kind of send it off here. Uh, enjoy the music and uh, please please look forward uh, to watching us hear from us next season uh, and continue uh, rocking on. Night everyone. This song is dedicated to all the Rift Casanovas. Take care, guys. And all you basement Romeos. You know who you are. She's my queen, lady of my dreams. Seems cold, but she's sweet as ice cream. Always got my back when I need assistance. Long range looker, stunning from a distance. Great listener, cute face, soft eyes. Fully stacked like a 10 kill magis. Can't persevere cause it's just too much. She makes me crescendo with just a quick touch. Instinct and passion with a deadly sense of fashion. Puts a cute and execute in the ass in assassin. Demands focus, beauty of a lotus. And when she makes her entrance, everybody takes notice. So supportive, skills so focused. Blows me away, can't resist cause it's hopeless. When in my tail, she's the wind in my sails. On a rating from one to ten, she's off the scale. A dragon goddess, her armor is modest. Breeze fire though, so you know she's the hottest. I could take a bite if she wants to trade. She's not the only one who's spec to invade. 
Foxy lady, fly like the 80s. Big hips and slim waist turn my intention shady. Spirit rush and I free, she gets the first strike. And she can land a charm on me anytime she likes. Battle bunny, sweet like honey. Riding on my day like it just got sunny. Don't care at all that the outfit is bursting. Broken soul, but she proves mine is working. Power and grace, she'll drop you like bass. If Ash is my queen, then says Ronnie is my ace. She's got the curves that I like, no playing. I'd like to bore between her thighs if you know what I'm saying. Grace me clemency, got so much chemistry. If she's a sheriff, I'm the volunteer deputy. I came to take a mind, body, and soul. And I showed her last night I got an ace in the hole. I like her style, her class, and her smile. She always gets me worked up, her skills versatile. I lean with her every time I get the urge. She might be nerfed, but she still makes my blade surge. Shines brightly, smiles at me politely. She's a dawn, but I take her out nightly. Fully armored and she's still living legend Cause she can make my sun rise in a split second They're the ladies of the league and I love them all Noxie and Tomasi and Asian white, large or small I joined up for one reason and it's not to fight Number one player, Tarek the Gem Knight That's right Ladies love the gems Gems all day yourself.